One of the most common misconceptions about game development is that you can only earn money from the games that you create. And this is the most common question that I get. What should I do? I publish a game. It's not earning me money. What can I do now? How can I earn money as a game developer? Now, this misconception is simply not true. And I'm going to go in this video through six ways how you can earn money as a game developer, even if you are learning. So during the time that you are learning how to code and make games. So let's go through them one by one. The first and the most obvious way is getting a job. And a lot of people get into game development so that they can start working in their favorite game studio and contribute to their favorite games. But how can you get a job in a game studio? What you need to know or what you need to have in order to apply or get a job? First of all, if you don't feel like your skills are there, where you are comfortable of making at least a simple game, don't apply for a job or show up for a job interview for that matter. Because you need to know at least how game development works. You, of course, need to know how programming works, depending on which game engine you're using and for which job you're applying. But also don't overcomplicate this. Don't wait until you're comfortable to create the next, I don't know, Grand Theft Auto on your own. Instead, be comfortable with creating a basic game, know how it works, know how to put a game together and put it in a way that is responsible. Somebody can open it, play it and so on and so forth. You also need to have a portfolio to showcase. And this is where a lot of people do things wrong because a lot of people finish college, they get a degree and they think that's enough to show up and apply for a job. But it doesn't matter if you have a degree, and a college diploma or not, you need to have a portfolio to showcase what you did when you're applying for the job. So you need to have something that people can open, run, play, test, and see what you actually created. And also be prepared to explain everything what you did. You don't have to explain it to the finest little small details, but be able to explain how you implemented certain things, which code or how you implemented the code that you use that, how you optimize the game and so on and so forth, because this is what you will be asked in a job interview. Now, how does a portfolio look like or how should it look like? This is something I find a lot of people overcomplicate for no reason. Basically, your portfolio can be a simple website where you showcase your projects, even a GitHub account. I mean, of course, having a website will make you look more professional. And I know a lot of people will not agree with me what I just said about GitHub being your portfolio. But in my personal experience, I use GitHub as a portfolio. People found me there, found my projects and offered me jobs for that. So you just need to have something to showcase something simple that is very easy to navigate, click on or clickable. And the employer who is looking at your portfolio will know how to navigate on it and click on your projects so that he can test them out and see them. Now, getting a job also depends on where you live. Because if you live in the United States, especially if you live in a uh, in areas or states where the cost of living is high, such as California, well, you need to get a really good job that is in the high six figures because, again, cost of living there is high, taxes are high, so your salary also needs to be high to match that up. If, however, you live in Europe, salaries there are also big, but the cost of living is a little bit cheaper than in US. And if you live in a third world country, while well, salaries are low, so as the cost of living and taxes that you pay there. The second way to earn money as a game developer is by selling your games, which is a dream of every game developer that I know, including myself. Now, when the term selling your game comes up, the majority of game developers thinks only selling your game on Steam. And that is partially true because you can publish a game on Steam, you can sell it over there, but that's not the only way to earn money by selling your games. You can sell the source code of your game or you can sell part of your game. For example, you can sell your character movement system, which solves a problem for another person who is creating a game and he needs some character movement system or character animation system or whatever. You can also sell some other part of your code that is, for example, integrating on a multiplayer service or doing some other thing that is common in game development, such as the things that I mentioned, that people are willing to pay for 
to have that problem be solved. So you can sell that on various marketplaces such as Unreal Engine Marketplace or Unity Marketplace and even other websites for that. Now, when it comes to selling your game on Steam, publishing it online, having people downloading and paying it, the way to approach that is not only by creating a game, publishing it online, and there you go, people will download it like crazy. That rarely happens nowadays because in the world where we live now, you need to take that approach or basically when you want to sell anything online, you need to build an audience. And the way that you will build an audience with creating your game or by creating your game is by creating devlogs, short videos documenting your journey from creating your game from day one to the last day. So you will create short videos, publish them on YouTube where you will talk about the things that you created in your game, the things that you have implemented, the problems that you encountered and how you solve them because people love to watch that. And what's most important there, people will engage with you, they will follow you and these were or these are the people who will download and pay for your game. Also, when you're doing that, don't forget to get feedback from those people because the feedback that you will get will be valuable for you to improve your game, to add new features, to remove the features that are not needed, that people don't want or don't like, so on and so forth. Now I can go on and on about building an audience and that's probably that requires two, three or even 10 videos because that's a process that you will learn by doing. So if you want to publish a game on Steam or on any other platform where you can sell your game, start doing it now because during the process, what I outlined over here is the basic thing, what you need to do, but during that process, you will learn a lot of things and you will see on, on your own and on your own example, practical way, how that works. Next, we have the all popular, one of the dreams of every developer, and that is freelancing. Because a lot of people would love to work from the comfort of their home, not having the need to go to the office, drive in traffic and go through all those things. Instead, they want to stay home and work on their own schedule. And freelancing makes that possible. Now, there are two ways how you can freelance. The first way is the most obvious one. You go on websites like TopTal, Upwork, Fiverr, or whatever. You apply for jobs, you get the job, you do it, and so on and so forth. The second way to freelance is having your own freelance company. Basically, people will come to you, hire you to create a certain project, and you and a team of your own people that you hire work on that project to deliver it. Now, the first way is more simpler because you work on your own, you get a project, you apply online, you get a project, you start working on it from the comfort of your home, yada, 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 so on and so forth. But this can also be, or depending on where you are, this might not be an option for you. Because again, if you live in California, where the cost of living is very high, you will need to earn in high six figures freelancing, which is hard to do online these days, except if you're very, 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 very good and a famous programmer who can charge, I don't know, hundreds or thousands of dollars per hour for his services, because you're competing with other people who are charging $30, $20 or even less per hour for their work. So depending on where you live, if you live in California where the cost is high, this might not be the option. But if you live in a third world country where, I don't know, 1K per month is enough for you to live like a king, then freelancing it is. Long link the freedom. Because you will be able to earn a couple of thousands of dollars even if you charge $20 per hour. Because again, cost of living is very low. Now, the second part or having your own freelance company is also an option, but that's a little bit tedious because people come to you they hire you for the project and then you have, I don't know, a team of five, 10 people or however, how many people you have and you work on the project. Again, depending on where you live, if you live in a high cost area, you will have to charge very good money for the project that you get because you have a team of people that you need to pay and they depend on you for, you know, the money to feed their family and, you know, pay the bills and stuff like that. So again, depending on where you live and if you can assemble a team of great people, then this might be the option for you. Now, again, when you're applying for freelancing work, and even if you have your own freelance company, make sure that you have some kind of portfolio where you can showcase the projects that you created or worked on because people will not hire you or anybody just based on the word of mouth or, you know, the things that you say you can do. People hire people based on the projects or the things they show them they did 
or they worked on and they have accomplished. Another way to earn money with game development is by teaching others how to make games. And this is what I do. Now, I know a lot of people will say, well, I don't want to create videos. Well, you don't have to because there are websites like Wizent, I believe, .com or TakeLessons.com where you can apply to teach people how to code and make games. You can have one-on-one -on -one lessons with them and you can charge hourly for that. And you can do this while you are learning how to code and make games. And before somebody says, well, yeah, but I don't want to teach you, I want to create a game. And that's totally fine. But you are missing one important point. By teaching others how to do or create a game or whatever your skill is, and you're teaching other people how to do that, you also learn as well. I don't know which scientist or whoever, you know, named that method or however, but there is a method for that that you learn by teaching others because while you're helping that person, first of all, you will revise or go over the things that you already know. And in a lot of cases, you will have to go and do some research to figure out a way how you can help the person that you're trying to help or you have lessons with. Because the problem you that he has, you didn't encounter before, you don't know how to solve it. And this is how you will enhance your skills. Now, especially if you decide to create online courses, you will also gain additional skills like video editing, advertising, marketing, funnel building, copywriting, because all of these skills are needed in combination with each other for you to be able to sell courses online. And these are very valuable skills because even if you open a company or if you create your own game, you will need to advertise it in order to sell it to other people. You'll need to market it. You will need to craft your copywriting so that people will get appealed by the, you know, the copy that they read. The description of your game needs to be appealing for somebody to start downloading or purchase your game first and download it and play it. So it's not only about creating an online video course, you know, recording yourself and whatnot. There are a lot of other skills that you will gain by doing that, that you can use in combination with your programming for your own benefit later on. The fifth way how you can earn money as a game developer is by contracting. Now, a lot of people think that contracting and freelancing is the same thing. Well, it's not. Freelancing, as we already explained, you apply for jobs online, you get a contract, I know it's a contract, uh, LOL, but you get the job and you do it from your own home on your own time and pace. Contracting is you going to a company and they hire you part-time, so you're not a full-time employee of the company. Instead, you are hired for during or during that contract time period. So it can be three months, six months, a year, two years, whatever that might be based on your skills, your experience, and the things that they need. Now, they might hire you to do a certain part of the game. For example, character movement or programming the environment or programming enemy AI or whatever that is. You will be hired. That will be your only single properly or solely task that you will do. And that is what you will focus on. Now, same as with freelancing, you also need to have a portfolio prepared so that you can showcase to the company, okay, this is what I did, yada, 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 because they will not hire you because you're pretty. They will hire you based on your skills. So make sure that you have a portfolio when you apply for a contracting job as well. The last and my favorite way of earning money as a game developer is through YouTube. And yes, I mean you creating videos and publishing them on YouTube. And no, I don't mean you becoming the next Logan Paul or that kind of YouTube. Instead, you creating tutorials and publishing them online to help people learn how to create games. Because YouTube or doing YouTube combines basically all these things that I've talked about. You can use YouTube for once. You can use YouTube as your portfolio because you will create projects. You will create real world games. You will publish them on YouTube. You will explain in the video what you're doing and how you're doing that. And a potential employer who wants to hire you, he can see that directly on your YouTube channel. He can see your skills, what you're doing, how you're doing it, how you explain it, which will give him an idea how you understand the things that you are doing. You can also use YouTube as your gateway for freelancing because I personally, I get a lot of emails from people asking me to help them on their projects and of course charge money for that. And the best thing about YouTube 
is that you can avoid all those third-party websites like Upwork, Fiverr, and so on and so forth that take a percentage or a cut from your revenue, which the client has paid for. So you will have direct access to your clients and these will usually be the people who follow you and they trust you so they can pay you via PayPal or Stripe or whatever and you can avoid the middleman and keep all the profit for yourself. You can also use YouTube to sell your online courses, which is what I'm doing because you will build an audience, you will have people who follow you, and these will be the people who will purchase courses from you. Now, first of all, I'm all about helping people with free content, but I'm not about giving everything away from free. Even if I was a millionaire, I would not give everything away for free because first, it took me a lot of time to learn all the skills that I have learned. Second, if you give something to people for free, they will not follow through. And I know this from my personal experience. When people invest in themselves, when they take something they love, like money from themselves that they earn hard and pay for something, then they will follow through. They will go through the course and they will watch it. If you give them away for free, people will not watch it. So that's also another way how you can earn money via YouTube, incorporate it. Now, another way is selling your game directly from YouTube. I mean, you can sell it on Steam, but your links will be on YouTube. So it will have a YouTube channel. You will put, you know, your game videos there, your gameplay videos, your devlogs and so on and so forth. And you will have links for people to click on and go and purchase your game. Another stream of revenue via YouTube is the ad revenue. Now, this is not high, you know, you will not become a millionaire from this, but depending on if your videos go viral or not, if you stay in the range of 100K to 200K views per month, like I am, you will earn somewhere in between 200 and $400 which is not bad given the fact that the average salary in third world countries is like 400 bucks. So that's like an average salary for me, but that's just the extra income I get without caring much about it. That comes and especially if some video goes viral, that income can increase significantly and that can happen basically any moment because you know YouTube is crazy with their algorithms and whatnot. Anyways, these are my five or six actually ways how you can earn money as a game developer even while you are learning how to code during that time. Now, if you're watching this video up until now, that means you love me very much. So hit the subscribe button, the like button, share it so that other people can see it. I have some links down in the description that can help you out. So make sure to check them out and uh, yeah, peace out. I will see you guys in the next video. If you like this video, don't stop now. Keep learning. Click on these videos that are on my side that are specifically selected for you. So just click on one of these videos and continue watching.